My name is Gulnara Junushaliva, and uh, today I'm glad to present topic what is the new on the research agenda, a bibliometric review of the relationship between key topics, food and innovation. Uh, please confirm if you could see uh, my presentation. Yes, we see it perfectly. Okay, good. Um, today, my presentation will cover the question and methods. I will share our funding uh, related to several uh, concepts, including innovation and food, open innovation, co-innovation, uh, social innovation, um, and uh, sustainability and sustainable food system. We also will cover the um, separately papers from Latin America and Central Asia. Uh, to answer on the research question. And finally, we will provide a conclusion. Uh, the main purpose of this research is to identify the direction and trends and in relationship between these two interdisciplinary topic, uh, food and innovation. For these purposes, we use um, uh, bibliometric methods that allow us to empirically document the volume, trends, and knowledge uh, development direction in the field. Uh, using a combination of bibliometric text mining and visualization uh, analysis, we address the following research question. What is the volume of published articles? What is the most influential journals? What is the most influential authors? And what is the major knowledge development direction in the studied field? Uh, we interrogated the uh, Web of Science for a database uh, by the topic food. Uh, that allow us to identify 940,000 uh, papers and topic innovation with uh, 245,000 papers. Uh, but given a large number of articles for further analysis, we use the two keywords at the same time. Thus, we established a sample of 8,053 um, papers. After data cleaning uh, steps, we got only uh, 7,405 papers. For this study, we use the definition provided by OECD. In the last version of Oslo Manual, the fourth edition, innovation is defined as a new or improved product or process that differs significantly from the unit's previous products or process and that has uh, been made available to potential users or brought into use by uh, the units. Compared to the third edition, a major consideration is reducing the complexity of previous list definitions um, uh, when we are um, comprising four types of uh, innovation, like a, a product, process, organizational innovation, and marketing, to two main types. This is a product innovation and business process innovation. Uh, here we could uh, also see the uh, two revised definition. The revised definition also reduced the ambiguity of the requirements for a significant change. Uh, the retrieved, uh, retrieved data show a significant number of published uh, papers during the period 1991, uh, 2021, and the number of articles show several spikes so we could see the 49% uh, increase in uh, 2007, 51% increase in uh, 2015, um, and 32% in 2020 compared to previous year. In general, we can um, be noted that the number of published articles in, is increasing every year. But in a way to understand the reason of spikes, we made a small analysis which show us that uh, in 2015, uh, Web of Science launched an emerging source citation index. 
aiming to expand the quarter collection by including more publications of regional importance and emerging fields. The Scientific Electronic Library uh, Online Citation Index was into, integrated into Web of Science in 2014, aiming to cover more studies from Latin America and the Caribbean. In 2020, we see a sharp increase, perhaps because many researchers had to stay at home with a focus on writing up papers rather than conducting the field study. Uh, the next research direction was to analyze the composition of papers according to the publishing country region, but not relate to the author's origin. Uh, when we analyze the total number of papers from the sample database, we identified that 70% of the total papers were published in the 15 top countries. USA is a country with the most published articles, 17%. Europe, presented by Italy, Germany, Netherlands, Spain, France, and UK, presented 32% of total articles. We also check most influential uh, funding agencies uh, for the topic uh, innovation and food, and we identified the three funding agencies from Europe and UK in the list of top 10. Uh, the European Commission is the leading funding agency and supported 300 uh, 64 papers from the sample database, European Commission Joint Research Center, and other 65 papers. In the list of top 10 agencies, we also have three agencies from USA, where the leading one is the uh, United States Department of Health Human uh, Services. Uh, on the first place is the uh, National Natural Science uh, Foundation of China, which supported 144 papers. Um, next, uh, um, we computed a journal co-sentation analysis map, which is formed by a series of bubbles. Uh, the bigger uh, the bubbles, the greater the number of citations for the journal, and similar bubbles are grouped together. Other information on the map, uh, here is a... Uh, um, linkages, uh, a series of links that represent the links of co-citation between articles published in other journals. Each bubble has a color that corresponds to the article published in related journals based on their co-citation frequency. Uh, the co-citation analysis generated six clusters the biggest cluster formed by uh, 377 items uh, is the red cluster. In the bottom table, we can observe a set of journals tightly grouped as important. Uh, the second cluster by the number of items is a green one, where the journals are grouped for a whole range of topics like uh, environment, agriculture, and policy. The third cluster is a blue cluster with the research papers that are essential for the food scientists and technologies. The fourth cluster, the yellow one, is covering health. The fifth uh, purple cluster connected journals about nature and ecology. The last one is light green, formed by 77 items with the uh, biotechnology topic, uh, which was the prevalent one. It's important to note that being cited does not necessarily mean that a journal is a part of the sample database. Data presented in the second table reveals that the journal uh, with the highest number of uh, published articles from our sample database is a uh, sustainability journal. The next journals are British uh, Food Journal and Journal uh, of Cleaner Production. The table above uh, presents the top 10 papers according to their number of total citation. Uh, four out of uh, 10 um, top papers uh, covers sustainability development topics. Uh, in the author's co-citation map, seven clusters were identified, and I want to highlight the international organization like um, European Commission, World uh, Health Organization, 
U.S. Food and Drug Administration, World Bank, OECD, FAO, and others. In the red cluster, we can identify the two authors that stand out, uh, Everett Rogers and Klaus Gruner. Uh, by pe performing the density visualization, we can identify which combination of the keywords is often used uh, by authors. This also indicates the trend and uh, patterns in the studied topics. In the density visualization, each point has a color that indicates the density of items at that point. By default, uh, colors range from the blue to green to yellow. In some cases, the color range up to red. Um, the larger number uh, of items in the neighborhood of a point and the higher the weight of the neighborhood, uh, neighboring items, uh, the closer the color to the point to red. Uh, this chart uses the uh, um, kernel smoothing to uh, plot values. In simple words, the red colors uh, means that the topic is fully covered and researchers uh, usually are looking for some uh, new trending topics in a green and uh, blue. As we expected, the keywords food and innovation has the most concentrated colors is yellow. Based on the uh, density visualization, we could articulate the semantic linkages between the keywords as follows. Innovation um, for food focuses on impact um, to support sustainability through system and policy in agriculture uh, to achieve the food security. Uh, the network visualization was made based on the 29,000 uh, keywords and um, uh, we established a limit of minimum 10 occurrences of the keyword to be included in the results. And the number of uh, 999 um, keywords met the thresholds that were displayed. Um, and uh, um, there was viewer generated the eight clusters of for the keyword occurrence analysis. Uh, the size, um, uh, of the cluster of rice and demonstrate the big difference between the bigger red cluster um, and the smallest one, the orange uh, cluster, where we have only 17 keywords. The red cluster with the 314 items uh, covers uh, topics like uh, food, uh, health, uh, the green uh, one relates to innovation at firm and industry level. Uh, the blue cluster is about the agriculture and food security. The yellow one is our main topic, uh, area covering how to achieve sustainability and its aspects and tools. The visualization make it easy to explore the specific topics uh, such as uh, SDG. Um, and here I want just to show uh, how we could see uh, uh, the SDG. Uh, SDG uh, very closely relate to the policy system, framework, governance, and sustainability. And all these topics is belongs to the yellow cluster. We also see that this is not too much um, have a relationship with the innovation and um, uh, but uh, the perspective and strategy is there. Uh, we also see the blue cluster with the management, agriculture, food security, adoption, and uh, climate change topics. Let me move back. Um, in the overlay visualization, the color of the keywords indicates the average year in which the publication with this keyword appeared. In case of the yellow cluster, it indicates a period of 2019-2021. Uh, Ten most recent keywords in overlay visualization, which we could see uh, in the table below. Um, Three keywords which we want to underline are COVID-19 uh, with the most recent average publication year 2020.82. Uh, then uh, two keywords are digital agriculture and cultural meat. 
All uh, yellow bubbles are the most recent topic and researchers could uh, find the trends and new relationship. In order to achieve SDGs, um, innovation in a different forms at a different uh, scales are needed. Uh, the innovation is a, a key enabling factor for the sustainable food system. Um, when we uh, back to the OECD type of innovation, we could say that cultured meat and digital agriculture are product innovation. But trends also show that we see more process innovation. Our investigation with the angle on the keywords innovation reveals that co-innovation is more recent topic with the average publication score 2019.33. Uh, Co-innovation promotes collaboration between researchers and stakeholders beyond an initial design phase to realize combined technological and institutional innovation in farming systems, sectors, territories, and value chain. Uh, 20 papers about the co-innovation out of sample database show that seven articles were published in 2020. This reflects the topic is actively emerging in publication. We also see that this concept actively spread in Uruguay, um, three papers, Italy, three papers, New Zealand, and Sweden. Uh, 68 papers from our uh, sample database on topic open innovation, which is not trending now as the average publication score was 2017.7. Uh, uh, um, open innovation is a, a symbol of practice that allows the businesses, even uh, in the agri-food sector, to collect ideas from the external um, environment, which is uh, capable to triggering uh, innovation process and which can be uh, then increase business competitiveness. And we also want to underline the social innovation. 93 papers with uh, keyword um, so which is stand out from the list uh, with the highest link weight, uh, 233, and the average publication year 2018.85. Uh, the social innovation integrates diverse resources and efforts from multiple stakeholders for better and sustainable development of economies, uh, food institution, and a system. Uh, what we uh, done next, we um, uh, further uh, re revised the uh, sustainable food system uh, terms, uh, 56 um, Papers with the keyword sustainable food system were revealed from the sample database we used to, to create the co-occurrence map. Uh, the keyword sustainable food system has a score of average publication year 2019. We see that uh, sustainable food system has only one link with the food system. Uh, at the time, at the, the same time, the food system is closely located near the keywords transition and transformation. We found sufficient literature about the uh, transition from the dominant food system to alternative ones built around the wider principles of sustainable production and rural development. Uh, the paper published in 2020 titled uh, Future Proofing European Food System with the Tools for Transformation and uh, Sustainable Food System Network argues that the research and innovation are central for tackling food system challenges, uh, often lacking systematic and participatory approach uh, to food system transformation. Uh, now uh, about Latin America and Central Asia. Uh, here are the two tables with the specified criteria for selection of literature. To begin with, we identified uh, the main topics for analysis, food and innovation in Central Asia, food and innovation in Latin America. We used filters, document type articles, publication year period 2010-2021, uh, web of Science categories, business, management, economics, uh, food technology, agricultural uh, engineering. 
Uh, we also search specifically using countries of Latin America and Central Asia region, and then deleted duplication, which allow us to get 204 peer-reviewed articles for Latin America and only four articles for the Central Asia. The data in the graph shows that the number of articles is growing, uh, but in 2020, we see a, a rapid jump uh, up to 61 article in Latin America. In second uh, figure, we see a distribution of papers by research areas. Uh, we investigated the two research area, uh, got a higher number of publication, business and economics, uh, 70 articles in 2020 in comparison to eight in 2019 and food and science uh, and technology. Uh, 23 articles in 2020 in comparison to six in 2019. In terms of language of publication, we identified that 172 articles were published in English and the rest in uh, Portuguese and Spanish. The outer core citation map has four cluster. There are uh, three international organizations like uh, FAO, Green Cluster, World Bank, and OECD, both from yellow cluster. Uh, we have uh, the um, uh, top 10, um, in the list of the top 10, uh, two authors which have already indicated for general topic, food and innovation, researchers Kathleen Eisenhardt and uh, Klaus Gruner. Uh, the current network uh, show us the four clusters uh, which had been obtained um, in the mapping of uh, 49 keywords. The green cluster show uh, that there, uh, there was a relationship between innovation, technology, and food industry. Uh, figure below demonstrates the uh, relationship between Latin America and other topics. And we see that Latin America belongs to the blue cluster. It combines uh, topic Latin America with the sustainability, food security, agriculture. And also we see uh, the topic climate change. Uh, Central Asia, uh, three articles out of four uh, were published in Lithuania in journal Entrepreneurship and Sustainability Center one in 2018 and two in 2020. The top uh, article was published in the US in Food Security Journal in 2013. Uh, three articles were based on Kazakhstan's data. Uh, the journal co-citation analysis generated the three clusters of journals uh, on network. Uh, the most visual intensive cluster formed by nine uh, items is a red cluster, which we can observe five top journals in the green cluster, the journal World Development, and in blue clusters, there are only two journals. The keyword occurrence network map uh, for Central Asia was generated by four clusters. In yellow cluster, we have uh, two topics, innovation and state regulation. The keyword food security belongs to the blue cluster and has links with the red and the green clusters. Uh, so we could summarize that uh, food security main topic for these four papers. In general, the number of publication is tiny and we cannot provide any uh, substantial further analysis for existing papers. Conclusion. In general, it can be noted that the number of published articles is increasing every year in the domain. Influential journals are Sustainability, British Food Journal, and Journal of uh, Cleaner uh, Production. In a list of different clusters, two authors stand out, uh, Everett uh, Rogers and uh, Klaus Gruner. Uh, the discussion of uh, to articulate the semantic linkages between keywords, food, and innovation shows that sustainability is tightly connected with the agriculture and food security topics. Uh, food system is using innovation for transition and transformation to sustainable food system. Latin America region is well introduced in web of science and has good coverage. However, local authors and papers seems to be scarce. 
the Central Asia region is only presented uh, we are few papers on Kazakhstan. Uh, thank you for your attention and time for question and answers. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Gulnara. So I will try to take a look. Um, do you want to still keep or shall we keep the slides shared? Otherwise, if you otherwise we see yeah. each other and I can also see the chat. So, yeah, work in progress. So very uh, thanks a lot for this nice and condensed uh, uh, overview what you did so far on the topic. Uh, so you are more than welcome to ask questions or give some hints. So as I said, I think clear research gap for Central Asia, which is maybe not that surprising, <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Martin. Yeah, many thanks Gunada, for this broad coverage. I found the visualization particularly impressive and they are really, uh, Colorful. Everything is not so easy to interpret, I understand. Um, and you are possibly still in the process of trying to carve out some, some messages from it. I had a spontaneous comment from your conclusions or from what you talked about in the last few slides. Do you have uh, some hypothesis why there is so little research on food innovation in Central Asia published? Uh, actually, this is not the first hour attempt to get the data. Our first attempt was to do the PRISMA analysis, uh, but for PRISMA analysis, you for sure need to have a full access to the articles to review and see. And for the Central Asia, when we started to look for the uh, main problem, I think this is the language because uh, we also look for the other databases like uh, uh, school, Google Scholarship. I also check some um, research gates, uh, academy and et cetera. And I found that there is uh, um, enough number of articles in Russian, uh, which is covering the topic innovation and food. Uh, when we discussed on our um, uh, monthly meeting, could we, um, interrogate data from another source, for example, and add to this research. We understood that we cannot uh, just uh, uh, take the different um, sources for different regions. For example, for Latin America, only from the Web of Science and for the Central Asia, from the Google Scholars uh, or from the research gate. Uh, but I think that the main issue, this is the language and this uh, requisition for peer review it because for Latin America, as I uh, indicated, uh, there is a two specific um, indexed, uh, indexes uh, which allow uh, Caribbean and Latin America papers to be presented in the web of science. But for the uh, Russia, Central Asia, it's not done really. Uh, we have, for example, for IT sector, um, I started to review also the um, uh, li semantic linkages uh, for the machine learning, because this is a part of the machine learning clustering algorithm. And I found that uh, for Russia, they have the uh, Russian citation index. And in this index, IT is quite well um, um, presented, but not the uh, topic food and innovation. If I may just follow up. Um, so you, you argue there is actually quite some research on food and innovation on Central Asia, but it is just not published in the journals that you included in your literature search, which is international English language uh, academic journals. I mean, as a first observation uh, for Latin America, one would say at least that English is also not the first language in these countries, right? So in that sense, they have the same barrier to access international English language uh, journals. Um, so then there must be another reason why, why Latin America is better represented than Central Asia in the international English literature. Would you specify your explanation? I mean, do you think um, could there be other reasons rather than, than the language proficiency that, that makes 
researchers on Central Asia not publish in these journals that re that you refereed that, that that you that you searched? Uh, or what, what specifically is your argument? I mean, when you say language barriers, there are various dimensions to this question. Yeah, either people don't speak the language, or they speak the language that they don't like to publish in that language. Um, there may be actually a correlation between language and other criteria that make people publish in certain journals, such as methods, quality, etc. What is your opinion on, on this, on these background reasons why we see such a stark difference in publication patterns between Central Asia and Latin America? Uh, thank you, uh, Martin. Uh, my uh, first and uh, the uh, most uh, important reason, I think that this is uh, uh, researchers from the Central Asia, they don't have um, much access uh, to the uh, internationally um, peer-reviewed journals. And this is a long process. And for this, you need to have infrastructure. I just was very curious why uh, Kazakhstan published the um, papers only from uh, through the one source, from the one resource. And I also checked the, who is the funding agencies. And for example, in Kazakhstan, the funding uh, agency was the Ministry of Science and education. So they particularly funded these uh, publications. Um, in our case, we don't have the uh, funding agencies which could support uh, uh, researchers to publish in internationally um, well-known journals. We also don't have the uh, process uh, to publish these uh, papers uh, in terms of um, the um, steps and procedures is not well known. Uh, and uh, for example, um, why I started to look for the Russia because many um, local um, say from Uzbekistan, from Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, many researchers started to uh, publish first in Russians, uh, um, in journals with the Russian language. And I was curious why these uh, Russian um, published journals not part of the web of science. And uh, the only way uh, to get uh, ac access to these journals, this is uh, uh, through the um, other um, organization like uh, uh, ResearchGate or Academy, uh, dot org, uh, but in the web of science, you need to go through the indexation, the uh, index. If you get the, this, um, let's say, uh, Russian citation index or uh, this um, emergency citation index, only in that way you get, uh, get the, um, access to the web of science and be presented there. I hope, uh, Martin, that um, I answered to your question. Okay, thanks a lot. I think there is a comment also on this topic by Zana. Would you like to add? I think you place it in the chat, but maybe. Okay. Uh, she's. Uh, Zana? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ramona. So actually what I feel while working in Central Asia, I do believe that uh, one of the bigger factors is the language. And the second bigger factor is that the young researchers do not find the uh, motivation uh, to get their research published in international journals. Firstly, again, uh, because of their uh, language. Um, uh, and secondly, uh, most of the times they are not being uh, made aware of the uh, made aware that if they're going to publish internationally, then what perks they're going to enjoy. And only uh, only once the senior researchers or professors, they start uh, publishing internationally. And if few of their young associates uh, would join hands with them to publish their work internationally, then they'll know the perks. Otherwise, normally what happens is what I have seen and observed is the young associates 
associates and young researchers, they are mostly focusing on getting their research published in only Russian journals and uh, Central Asian journals. And they don't even consider getting it published internationally. Uh, and sometimes I also feel that it, it also somewhere uh, um, is uh, buried in the fact of lack and motivation uh, that they will feel that they'll have to put a lot of struggle uh, to get, like to reach that language proficiency in terms of writing, uh, in terms of scientific writing and then getting it published. And then obviously another step is a review process. So yeah, this is what I think. Yeah, thanks a lot, um, Pavlina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is another topic. Um, thanks, Kulnara, for uh, your presentation. It's really interesting. I'm actually myself dealing with um, uh, innovations, but policy innovations in the field of marine governance. And I'm specifically focusing on a one specific innovation. So in this direction goes also my question, uh, because this is kind of like a work in process and also like a good overview. But I was wondering, like, what are the like what could be the follow up now? What would be the implication of well, the next steps, um, which you may include in the research question, but I kind of I was not, uh, to be honest, paying a lot of attention at, at that point. So kind of like what would you do now further with these results? That's um, one question. And I think you can answer also my second one in this uh, with the with the same uh, with the same response, because um, you mentioned um, that the food innovations, you kind of place them in the field of product innovation and business process innovation, right? So, and for me, this is like really abstract. So the field of uh, food systems, non food is not like my field. So I was wondering if you maybe can give one example, or I assume you were not able to read all the articles like uh, thoroughly, but um, did you notice any specific food innovation in as a product innovation and or business process innovation or which one maybe was more predominant? So basically, did you notice any specific food innovation that you find like more often in the literature? And maybe this would be my suggestion, maybe as a next step, you could focus on specific uh, innovations no, that are basically most met and kind of trace their spread. Now, this is basically what I do uh, in my transfer policy transfer uh, theory. So kind of trace that they spread. Where did they come from? What was the influence? No, uh, which actors were involved, etc. So basically, it would be now this is a suggestion and a question about the further steps. Thank you. Thank you, Pavlina. Uh, this is a very interesting question uh, because uh, what we do, uh, the first, why we started the, all this bibliometric analysis, uh, because we have already developed our plan actually and reported in August saying that we will do the uh, research of innovation in the food system in Central Asia and Latin America. And then question comes, how we could review this two big region and have the one research to cover the um, uh, food system or uh, food and innovation in one uh, angle. And then we come to the solutions that the, we could do first, the uh, bibliometric analysis to see what is happens actually. Um, in terms of uh, your question about this uh, new uh, two type of uh, innovation uh, based on the Oslo manual, uh, we have uh, the uh, product innovation and business innovation. Actually, our first idea was that we will do the uh, more product innovation to see how really it's implemented uh, and how this is uh, uh, change the system and implement it uh, through the whole uh, food system uh, and pre-processing uh, pre -processing companies um, in Central Asia. Uh, but when we starting to look for the, what is the trending now, we understood that uh, there are mostly um, the process innovation. Um, let's me back to uh, my presentation. And as I show you the, um, we have the uh, trending topics and one of the trending topics, this is a cultured meat. And this is a product innovation. Uh, for the cultured meat, we could say that this is a, um, have very high linkages in the uh, terms of the citation, co-authorship and the um, um, occurrences in the paper. This is, a, uh, we could say that well-known for the 
uh, worldwide, but we also see this in the uh, countries like uh, USA, in Europe, like uh, Italy, uh, France, uh, UK. This is a, a very, very, very popular topic uh, for the for this type. But we cannot say that this is a really uh, good topic for the Central Asia because the uh, development uh, of the food system is different one. Yeah. And uh, but uh, the another way uh, we see that there is a new uh, three new uh, process innovation. This is a co-innovation, social innovation, and open innovation. Um, from uh, our observation, I actually had the time to look at the uh, full papers uh, we reviewed near the uh, fifty. Uh, papers about the co-innovation, open innovation, and social innovation. And we think that we really could find the nature of this uh, type of the innovation in our searches. And we now will change our um, um, methodology because we have already developed the, uh, some methodological uh, approach and predefined some uh, questionnaire and with uh, uh, aiming to understand the nature of innovation with the firm level innovation and etc. Now we will uh, change this a little bit to make sure that we also will look for the uh, process innovation because it started to be more critical um, when uh, we have too many type of innovation and uh, not type, but uh, innovations uh, in terms of we have digital agriculture, we have cultural meat, we have uh, uh, the uh, GMO and some other type of the product. But uh, when we're looking for the uh, on the not industry level, but the firm level, probably we need to be more uh, clear with the, uh, what is the um, region and what is the aim and what type of the uh, innovation we want to uh, identify within our uh, further research. Uh, so I think that uh, this uh, uh, approach help us uh, to uh, predefine uh, and to move from the mistake which we could uh, do if we will uh, just looking for only product innovation. Now we will be also looking for the process innovation. Pavlina, if I may just follow up. And then that would be the idea, would you then expand to something else than scientific journals? Maybe like, uh, if you say firm level innovation, would you maybe go to certain company reports just to, because I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know if you have found that much information in scientific articles on um, the types of innovation on firm level. Um, actually, um, f the first my approach when we see that uh, we have the new um, methodology from the Oslo manual, I was expected that the uh, National Statistical Committee will also will change the methodology uh, for predefining the innovation and reporting the innovation activities, but it was not done. Um, I uh, sent a request um, on the website uh, to the National Committee and they reported that they still didn't get um, the uh, last uh, instruction how to change the statistically. So the statistic on the co company level and on the country level will still show this four type of innovation, product innovation, process innovation, organizational and uh, marketing innovation. Uh, but uh, if we will apply this uh, last version of the Oslo manual, we will be doing the, our manual review and work uh, to revisit uh, this uh, data and to apply to this uh, new um, um, statistic uh, for the uh, uh, type of, uh, of for the type of innovation for now i could say that um, each company uh, provides a report to the national statistical committee and uh, they report using the old one mm -hmm. and um, uh, we uh, sure could find the um, all uh, data 
uh, to uh, predefine what type of the innovation is done because this is a, um, a scripted and reported uh, to the National Statistical Committee from the firm level. Yeah, I think Ulnara already laid or mentioned this. Sure, there are no a lot of uh, ways to go, but I think one major point was what she showed about this development in terms of what kind of innovations are discussed. I think that's quite interesting one if we speak about sustainable food systems and their different clusters, how they are also related, in which way innovations interact and the different, what is always these, I don't want to say buzzwords, but co-innovation and such things to dig into deeper there. And the other part will be to have a more focus on Central Asia, what was also the initial idea to think about how to proceed there, because as we see, English speaking literature doesn't help much um, if we turn then more to Russian speaking or also some primary data collection in terms of innovation. Okay. If there are no further questions or remarks, thanks a lot, uh, Gulnara, and also to all participants. Um, we will see each other in March. Uh, Christoph Funk will present, so there will be an announcement for 16th of March, if this is not a holiday, but I think I need to check it isn't. No, it's also Wednesday. So um, see you all latest then. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.